Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Um, my name's Mark Wormsley, and I'm the uh, founder of the Arts and Culture Network. We're over 100,000 strong now around the world across six LinkedIn groups, growing with we're having we're welcoming over 150 people every day to the groups um which is which is great but this is the best bit for me this is where i get to introduce you to one of our full members and i'm delighted that paul abbott has joined me today we've been corresponding making referrals chatting up to this point but this is where i get to introduce him to you so paul thank you so much for joining me today hi good to see you um, what I like to do is to give our new members a chance to say hi to everyone uh, briefly and um, so that anyone who wants to get in touch will know why that would be a good idea. Um, you're in Leeds, aren't you? Um, That's right. Yeah. An hour's walk out of the city centre and 45 minutes away from rural seclusion, which sounds great. So over to you, Paul. Um, do the intros. Well, good to see you all. Um, I'm... Paul Abbott. I'm um, a coach, particularly working with creative people. I'm an event specialist and I've had a long career doing that. And I'm now an author of a book called Events Are Easy, which is all about how to organize events from the point of view of somebody who fell into it. And it's targeted at a lot of people who have to pick up events in their own lives, usually dropped in their lap. So um, I, I've, I've built quite an interesting little career for myself over the years. Um, uh, and as Mark will know, I started life as a musician and I'm still a working musician. I'm a composer in my own right, but I've been taken in all kinds of um, places. So um, recently I decided to bundle all of that together and start helping other people through uh, through my coaching, through training, um, and through development opportunities. So if you want to get in touch with me, it's serotona.co.uk or eventsareeasy.co.uk. Brilliant. Thank you, Paul. And we've spent enough time together to know, for me to know that you are, that uh, an hour with you is special. So thank That's you very, very kind much. Of you. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. And thank you for being one of our full members and also for being such a um, an active member of our community and coming to our events. It's very much appreciated. So now just to um, lighten the mood somewhat and to pull out some anecdotes and surprises, it always does, I'm going to create your fantasy cultural year from the answers to 10 questions. And that. then um, it's fun because I've often, some of the people I've done this with have said at the end, Mark, could you create a travel agency so I can book this, please? <laughs> <laughs> Let's okay, go. there are no wrong answers. Um, favorites, anything that comes to mind, um, that kind of thing. So to, to kick us off and to place us somewhere, I'd like you to tell me if you have a favorite building. Yes, I think that would be the Grand Arch in La Défense in Paris because I still remember when I was a teenager and I saw it for the first time and it sits so resolutely at the other end um, of that long, long run of road from the Arc de Triomphe. And it's kind of so modern and yet so simple and huge and elegant and beautiful and stunning. So yeah, that'd be it. Right. That sounds good. I should have pulled up. I'm going to show people that just in case they haven't seen it. So it's the arch at La Défense. Yeah, it's a really incredibly beautiful and simple thing. And I think they called it the window on the world because you can see right through it. Oh, I know, yeah. It's not. Isn't, doesn't that look fantastic? So let's find a nice picture of it and share my screen. So there we go. Uh, would that be it? That's the one. Yeah. That's the one. And it's it appears, and actually it's a great set of photographs because you can see how it appears slightly differently in the various different architectural contexts. Yeah. Um, but it also has this kind of symbolism around around peace, which just seems to be endlessly so important and we never seem to get there. I know. I love that. That's great. There we go. So that's where I'm locating you. As an aside, and these this is the first aside. Um <laughs> There is a building, I think it's in Aberdeen in Hong Kong, and it's a, a big office block, a, a, a residential block, and they submitted the plans to the local authorities and um, they were told that they that the, the building needed a hole in the middle of it. Um, 
and apparently it was a feng shui expert said that the if you put the building there the dragon will not be able to get down to the harbor to drink that's um, fantastic and they put a hole in the building um, i love that that is so, so important you see these things matter <laughs> let me show you if i can find it uh yes, where are we yep that's it and they put a number in so these uh uh let me share this with you hang on You'll love this. Um, can you see that? Oh, isn't that brilliant? It's like, it's like the, the dragon, dragon just punched straight through it. Yeah, that's the that's to let the dragon through to get down to the harbour look down here. I love it. That's brilliant. I love it when um, ridiculous human humanity gets in the way of what would otherwise be a very logical thing anyway that's that's our first anecdote <laughs> that's I've great that. I it's actually i was in hong kong in 95 i think before the handover and um yeah we went on a tour around it's it's around the other side of kowloon i think and yeah it feels like it needs a dancer lit in bright colors in that space yes oh it does doesn't it with loads yeah. of smoke coming out of it it'll just be yeah. incredible <laughs> see spot, spot the the um, event producer i can't stop myself <laughs> Right, so you're sitting at an outdoor cafe overlooking that wonderful arch in at La Défense in Paris in the June. It's sunny. It's six p.m. There's a cafe, and you're just happy sitting there admiring the view. Um, on your right is um, a book. Now, this could be a book that's been with you all your life. It could be your favorite book. It could be one you've discovered recently that you'd like everyone to know about. Any book you like, but what is it that's sitting half read or reread on the table next to you in this Parisian cafe? That's really quite easy because it's lived with me for all my adult life. There's a book by Paul Clay called The Pedagog Pedagogical Sketchbook. It's easier to read than it is to say. <laughs> and it's a very small, very thin, very sensible collection of lines and curves and, and shapes about pathways and how how forms are made and it was written for artists and for his students but um i was shown it by roger marsh when he was one of my early he composition teachers um and advised to read it and you know some lessons you're taught that stick with you and it absolutely has stuck with me um and the older i got and the more abstract and hardcore electronic -y music I started to write, it stayed with me um, and informed the way that I think about structure and texture and and lines and shapes and forms. But but actually, strangely enough, I've kind of gone full circle with it and taken it back into the visual art that I do as well. Um, so yeah, it, it's, it's just a beautiful, beautiful little book. And I always find it inspiring. You can flick to a page and if there's nothing there, it takes me on a journey and it usually sparks some sort of creative response and i just love, love it. that the pedagogic pedagog ped pedagogical sketchbook pedagogical ske sketchbook textbook yeah love yeah. that okay it's a, it's a sketch yeah it's, it's a sketchbook and i i mean pedagogical for anybody who wants to say it easier just think of teaching learning mm. <laughs> learning <Yeah>. stuff <laughs> love that it ain't as posh as it sounds it's a it, it's a very very simple beautiful book for people it's gorgeous Lovely. I'll have to look into that. This is an education for me doing these meetings as well, which is great. Um, on your left is your favourite drink. Um, now it's 6 p.m. in the afternoon, early evening. Um, <laughs> have anything you like sitting there. What would you have? Oh, do you know, all my friends would be giggling. At that time, it would probably be a nice cold pint of IPA or a decent lager. Mm, okay, nice. I can I can I can live with that. That would that would be lovely. So there you are in the sunshine. Now you're 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 feeling quite pleased with yourself because you've just come from a meeting um with a rather wealthy French family foundation who That's invest good. in uh, it's, it's a good start, isn't it? <laughs> who, they are instinctively philanthropic, um awash with cash and um cr are very very keen to support research in the arts and culture sector to to increase access and equity around the world um and um so they've invited you to do it to take a year off 
um, fully paid, first class all the way, um, all expenses paid, nice fee, everything at home is sorted, um, to visit at the country of your choice to assess the landscape of perceptions around arts and culture in that country to find out what can be brought back to Paris, not that they need much teaching, um, to, to improve circumstances. So you get to choose the city and the country. Where are oh, you going? Dear. That's really interesting, isn't it? Because you've extended that question out in quite a quite a difficult way. Where would I go? I think I think I would probably go to India. Mm-hmm. Nice. Um, in that I've had quite a, a long relationship with with sort of South Asian music, art, dance. Um, in fact, I used to sit on the board at South Asian Arts UK. So I'd actually have time to invest in really going and digging some of that culture up, not just being somebody who sits on a board with it and loves it, mm. but actually really go and explore. And I think what's particularly interesting there, I think, for me is how how in 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 countries like India, there's such a strength in history and all of what we would call the classical um classical arts and culture which is really in, in, in inbuilt and yet there is so much that's of great modernity quite western influenced but unashamedly unashamedly of the country and how culture is actually really embedded right into the culture which actually i think in european countries we would do well to learn more about mm. for all we have more funding mm. the actual care and love for the arts is a very different thing and i think mm. that you know that's sort of i don't know some of it's spiritual and, and it's and it comes from very different different places uh because the music and the the art and the dance exists for different reasons mm. but actually i think we you know we, we we live at a time where we should be thinking about how how we build a future in a very different way mm. and not always cleaving to the past because it was that way how can we take it and reinvent it and do new things with it mm. because it, it, it is our time and our time is the influence of the future life mm. didn't stop at bark as much as js bark is my you know god i would still say you know he would have loved it if you you know if you did something crazy and electronic mm. yeah well, um, there is one of our members um, who I had a call with a couple of weeks ago who who is based in India, a cons uh, working in the arts and culture sector. And he said that actually, because there are so many different languages and so many different religions um, and faith paths in India, um, climates, um, he said they, they do a better job than most at being inclusive and um uh, accommodating in the around the arts and culture sector so there's a lot to be learned from that I think so which city would you like to be based in Paul? Probably Delhi because I know people there okay. right. <laughs> and I don't like to be alone <laughs> <laughs> yep right you're in you're right you're on the plane okay mm -hmm. all packed up Louis Vuitton all the way um they, <laughs> what are you trying they, to say <laughs> they even gave you um a budget and a personal shopper at harrods to go and get kitted out for your year um which um is which, so you're on the plane very comfortably first class all the way um to delhi from from home um and once you're airborne a steward knocks on your first class cabin and gives you a a letter and it's from the family foundation in paris and they've they want to study you while you study them and to do that they want to know the impact on you of restricting your musical listening for a whole year to one's very specific genre of music that's all right i'll restrict it to one artist give me prince as long as i've got the prince back catalog i'm there yep, you can you and you know what? That's really easy because it's funky and it sticks in my head. But if you've got a good musical memory, and you'll know this, if I want to listen to anything else, I just close my eyes and it's there. Yeah. 
Yeah. So of course I've got Marla. I'm just not going to tell him that I snaffled it somewhere. <laughs> you got Marla. Marla and Prince. What a what a year. I mean, great year. <laughs> that oh, would that a... would have been a collab that I'd want to hear. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I got to see Prince live in um in the uh, probably early nineties. It was the the Love Sexy tour at Wembley. Um, I was very happy. It's a great album. Yeah, and there's a wonderful. There are two wonderful tracks on YouTube, aren't there? That you've probably seen. There's when he guested with Tom Petty doing "When My Guitar Gently Weeps." Oh, uh, from the Hall of Fame. Yeah, that is quite phenomenal, and it's really gorgeous because it's got um um um. What's his name from the Beatles? Um, he was being inducted. Uh, what's his name? George. George um, Harrison. Yeah, George Harrison. And George Harrison's son is playing guitar in the background. Yeah. Which is really funny because when I first saw it, I thought it was Bernard Butler, actually, because that was really funny how similar they look. Yeah. Um, yeah and Jeff, Jeff Lynn as well, I think, is on that. And um, Yes, that's right. And Stevie Winwood on keys. Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, it's a heck of a performance. It is. And the, that, that crazy thing at the end where he throws the guitar in the air and it disappears. I mean, yeah, that... he always did that. There's um, his guitar text down the front. Right. And I'm quite lucky. I got to interview Susan Rogers a couple of years ago on stage, um, mm. and I got to spend the whole day with her, which was really quite amazing. Um, and so actually, I, as I got older, I saw Prince about four times, I think. We got to go to an after-show party as well, which is like <gasps> oh, wow. Wow. legendary, incredible. And all the things that people say about it, times yeah. it by 10 and then put it in real close focus and then you're somewhere near to wow. what that feels like um especially for a super fan you know statistically mm. i am in super fan territory yeah um but you know spending spending the day hearing about somebody who you know, there's usually really bad stories about big stars but actually the more stories that i've heard and the more people i've talked about what a sort of generous and actually probably quite deeply kind person just oozing with talent that was just too much to know what to do with. Mm. It's yeah. incredible. And that's how I could quite easily put all of that work and just say, hey, call, call that a genre because at least you can get from, you know, sometimes it's nose in April all the way through yeah. Get Off, which is just banging. And, yeah, that, you know, was a, that was when I used to run a mobile disco, Get Off was one of the dance floor fill fillers, yeah. It, it was one of the first singles that I got, the maxi version, and mm. it's so incredible and the fact it's got rosie Gaines on it it's just mm. you know it, it, that's that's special i mean what a voice that is Brilliant. don't get me started don't get me started so you're listening to prince all the way um now you get to um delhi mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and there is a group of people who meet you with your name on a card at the airport they're your they're your minders for the first week um as you immerse yourself in the in the culture now the choices you can make here don't have to relate to indian culture but they so they but they can do and you may choose to but the first thing once you've unloaded your luggage and unpacked at your lovely um apartment that they've given you <coughs> excuse me um they want to take you to a dance performance now this can be anything you like. It doesn't have to be Indian. Um, it can be any dance, any dancer on the stage, living or dead, any dance group or any dance style. So what's happening? Interesting. That's really, really interesting. I mean, I like anything that's kind of funky and, and you know, as you can probably tell, I'm just looking up a name because I want to make sure I get this right. That's actually. all right. Um, there is a fantastic artist who I worked with a couple of years ago called Antonio Bukar Sabuma. And I apologize for saying that wrong. There's too many S's um, at the same time. Who is, um, well, he's actually based at um, NSCD in Leeds, I think, at the moment. Mm. Um, and yeah, he's, he's quite an incredible, incredible dancer. Um, I can't remember where he's actually from from i think uganda i think i'm not sure but mm. an incredible ability of, to pull sort of street dance and world culture into one incredibly smooth and cool and slippery being i mean we did um, a performance as a pop-up in uh, the big shopping center in leeds mm. 
And I'll never forget it because he brought some of his students with him and he just appeared down the escalator while the music was happening. And mm. he had so much power in one human being that he was able to to draw in everybody from around and about in the shopping center and get them all to to focus on him. And then actually when he let loose and he was pulling all of these different different moves, the crowd was enormous and he was in complete and utter control. And then snaps out of it when you talk to him afterwards. And he's just very, very calm and very... How do you spell his second relaxed. name? You still got it there. I have. Um, and I do apologise, Antonio. I should just be able to do that. But um, S-S-E-B-U-U-M-A. There we go. Nice. And I Excellent. do apologise. I can't remember which country he's from. Um, it's Thank been you. a couple of years since I've seen him, but yeah. what an amazing dancer. There is a link somewhere on YouTube, I think, to that, um, because it was one of those pop-up things where you know everyone's doing that rather than actually watching. But that was, that was, a, that was a great That's show. Great. You can have that. Now, they're taking you out to dinner afterwards, and you can choose the national cuisine. doesn't have to be Indian. Ooh, anything with noodles. Anything with noodles. <laughs> Anything with noodles. I think it's all. I mean, I'm past a fan anyway, but yeah, give me a, okay. give me a tub. Um, if you want to be really specific, give me some kind of Saigon noodles, like those little vermicelli thread ones with a little bit of coriander in it and some carrots and some spicy and some nice little kind of, you know, and the pork slightly chewy and there's a little bit of a bit of chicken or something in there. And just, yeah. Very oh, nice. Yeah. Lovely. Excellent. <laughs> I think about um, food all the time. <laughs> <laughs> now the next day is sport day, uh, okay. and they can they want to take you either to spectate or participate in a, the sport of your choice. So yeah, you can choose the the sport. So what would you want to watch or do? Oh, if I was participating, take me to the athletics. I'll go and run. Give me a ten k any day. If I was watching, I don't know. I, I might watch all sorts of bits of sport. Um, and I flip from thing to thing. At the moment, I'm a bit obsessed with um with the world superbikes and the British superbikes. <laughs> Just so exciting and so brilliant. Um, I love I love all of that. So yeah, yeah a bit of, a bit of running and a bit of watching other people do something quite dangerous. <laughs> Sounds like a good afternoon out. <laughs> now, um, next day they're going to take you to a new fantasy pop up art gallery in delhi it's digital and mm -hmm. it's immersive and it's projected um and they can provide you with an immersive experience walking through a, a, a series of corridors onto which is projected or screen displayed um the entire work of a visual artist in chronological order so you can walk through the life of that artist but you can only of course because this is me you can only have one artist. Who would you choose? Well, if it's projected, why are we projecting anything other than video art that was made to be seen? So let's make it a very, very long day with a very long exhibition. And let's put the amazing Vicky Bennett, people like us, and let's watch every single one of those incredible cut-up films one at a time down the corridor. Brilliant. But you've turned that into a weekend's work. Um fun Vicky oh yeah i don't sleep so that's fine everyone else can go home <laughs> i will just be watching i'll just be watching excellent love that now they're going to lighten the mood tomorrow um it's a magical <laughs> the a magical theater and they can put on any play or any musical or any opera um with the original cast if you wish um for you to sit and watch what's happening on the stage play musical or opera Oh, that's a real tricky one. Do you know, if I had to choose, I keep reflecting things back. Am I at that age where you reflect back on your life so far and make decisions about the future? I think so. Um, are you are think... you on the back? Are you on the back nine? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's just an evolution, not a revolution. Um, I'm. Probably going to pick Martin Crimp's attempts on her life, but in a version that I did with Mary Luckhurston out of the Blue Theatre Company about 20 odd years ago. And I scored it, and it was just life changing that play because it. You scored it. 
I scored it, yeah. Yeah. I'm really proud of that that one. Um and yeah, I've done quite a bit of theatre one way and another. Um did a few bits of Carol Churchill's plays in some monstrous ways. And Mary Luckett's amazing to work with. Mm. Um but I think um I think for me it has it has so much that's interesting about looking at brands and the world and the way that we the way that we almost humanize brands and vice versa and yeah, it's just it's just such a clever piece as attempt. So I think it's just great a great piece. And okay. it's always stuck with me, so I'll take it with me. Excellent. That's great. Um film night. What's on? Oh, that's easy. Ronin. Ronin. Yeah, um Frankenheimer's last great movie. Um, all star cast, absolutely superstar um laden film. Um I mean, it's Robert De Niro, um, John Reno, um, Natasha McAlone. It's uh, it, it's got Scarlett Skarsgård in it, I think. Who else is in it? Sean Bean's in it at the beginning. It's a really, really, really good film. Okay. Oh, and Jonathan Price, of course. Yes. Excellent. Okay, you can have Ronin. Then Hero Day, lunch in Delhi. Mm-hmm. Two hours, leisurely, top restaurant, um, dining partner. Jay Rayner. Living or dead. Jay Rayner. Jay Rayner. Absolutely. Lovely, lovely, lovely man. Mm. And his books are amazing. Yeah, I love that. It's R-A-I-N-E-R, isn't it? R-A-I. A- it's R-A-Y, isn't it? Is it? R-A-Y. Okay. I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> excellent. You can have lunch with Jay Rayner. And then you've got... Yeah, it's R-A-Y-N-E-R. I was oh, right. yeah. My, my mistake. Sorry, Jay. <laughs> Sorry, Jay, if you're watching. <laughs> but I'll still, I'll, still, I'll still take you for noodles. Yeah. <laughs> right. That's your year done. Okay. You're That's on quite the... a good year. I yeah, it's that. a great year. Um, you're on the flight home. There's another note on your chair saying that your the restriction to prints has been lifted. Okay. Um, so you can listen to some anything else now. What's the first track you would want to listen to after having spent a year listening to Prince and a bit of Marla? Oh, that's really, really tough. The first song that's just come in my head this morning is um, I Want to Run to You, Whitney Houston. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah what a voice that is. What a voice. Um, yeah. it's, it's probably there because I was I walked to the shops last night, um, which is about 25 minutes each way, mm. with there's a, there's a kind of remixes album and revisitation which i think was to do with the whitney movie mm. it's a banger yeah. <laughs> but Excellent. that voice haunting yeah brilliant well th- there you are that's your that's your annual that's your your year of culture fantasy year of culture but i've got a couple of supplements because of the work that you do mm-hmm. um um of all of the events that you've involved you've been involved with and uh, of which one are you most proud and why? Oh, that's really tricky. I mean, I've organised thousands of events. I think one of the ones that sticks in my head was that um, was the opening of the food courts in Leeds about, I can't remember how many years ago it was now. Um, and we did it as a sort of collaboration with Light Night, but we organised it with um, with the team from the conservatoire where I worked at the time. And we brought together dancers and improvising musicians in in public. Um, it was called We Are Universe. And it was the idea of like the, the the idea of Leeds being a very central place where surrounding it, there are people who don't actually go into the city because they just don't think it's for them and it's not connected. And so we were sort of musing on some of those ideas and some of the projects that that work with it. Um, but also thinking about the way that when we live in a place, we see it as the center of the universe and actually it's not. And, you know, the, the, the communities here are so multicultural. So we wanted to create something where everything belonged and everything existed in that space and it was all valid and it could all happen. So we pulled all of those elements together and we said, right, go. It's a five, six hour performance. I mean, it took 10 days to rig. And we filled the place with stage smoke and it was full of light. I think we got about 3,000 people through on the first night. Um, and, you know, the traders were lovely and, you know, it was all very new to everybody. So we were 
um because it it's a food hall that was installed perhaps controversially for some in the middle of the market um and it's really grown actually if you want some great street food it's a really fab place to go um mm. and it's evolved a lot but you know we we saw it as a great space to do something exciting and interesting and um, yeah i'm really proud of that we even had stacks like huge huge speaker stacks all the way around the space with an eight channel surround sound um kind of post electro acoustic acoustic trap that was mixed live in the space with a guy on an ipad um but yeah i had full responsibility for the whole thing with that from the artistic direction all the way through all the techie side and getting all the paperwork done and it's always stuck with me because it it it's had a far deeper impact on the people who saw it than even i thought it would have I thought it would be impressive and it would be cool, but people were actually really genuinely moved. And I think it's because, partly because the musicians who were improvising were great. The people who'd done all of the animation work and the stage design and all of that sort of stuff um, were great. But the, I, th I think people walked into a space where they could feel that there was a natural, genuine energy in the art that was being created mm. you know and, if, and whatever we do as events people you know we always it's always seen as sort of separate thing but actually your event is a vehicle for whatever the purpose is of the event and you know to be able to do that with your first love which is music and to be able to do it in a really deep artistic way as a creative that's you know really special that's great really special that's wonderful paul we've had a lovely long chat which has been lovely as an introduction to to our members so thank you so much for joining me to do this oh um, no thanks for having me we could probably talk all day right <laughs> we could you and i could easily and we must do a do another one because they because we haven't done the this or that game yet which we'll do for a special um we'll do a, a reboot um oh yeah okay <laughs> um thank you so much for being one of our active full members where can people find you i will put it in the copy but um you're on linkedin paul um abbott and um two places you... to find me yeah. www.serotona.co.uk or yeah. www.eventsareeasy.co.uk just like Excellent. the book brilliant <laughs> no i um good, good luck with the book that's that's great so thank you again for being such an active and full member of our gang um we should put um we should probably put an extract of, from the book um in the profile that we write about you for for publication but in the meantime paul thank you so much and see you again soon thanks for having me